Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be installing Cal Linux version 22.3 in VirtualBox on a Windows 11 PC. Before we get started, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. For RAM, the lowest that you can have is two gigs of RAM, four is recommended. For disk space, you're gonna want at least 20 gigs of hard disk space, two CPU cores, the Kali Linux ISO image file. You need VirtualBox and the extension pack. Now, if you don't have that installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. All the steps and tools used in this video will be linked in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can also check out GeekRar Guides, which is my dedicated channel for running virtual machines. Now let's install Kali Linux. Here we are at the official website, kalilinux.org. Uh, we're at the main page. We just have to click on the down link right over here and it'll take us to the download section. What we have over here is the bare metal version. We're not using the virtual machine version. We're gonna do bare metal. So go ahead and click on that and it'll take us to that section. And it'll bring us down to this section. You can scroll down a little bit more and you can see that the latest version for Cal Linux is 2022.3. And we also have the 64-bit version available as well as a 32-bit version available. We're gonna be doing the 64-bit version. And down below, you can see that this is where you download the ISO image file. It's just a little under three gigs in size. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on that and let it download and I'll jump over to the next step. All right, our download is now complete. You can see that we have the ISO image file here. We just wanna make sure that we know where it's located because we're gonna be pointing to this file later on. I have mine in my downloads folder, which is great, so we can continue. I'll just minimize these folders right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my VirtualBox. So I have my Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager open right now. I have some virtual machines already listed here, but we're gonna be creating a new one. So I'm gonna click on the new button over here and we're gonna give it a name. The name I'm gonna be giving it is just Kali Linux and the version number is 2022.3. The machine folder you can change to whatever folder you'd like. You can switch the folder if you require more space. Type is gonna be Linux. For version, we'll be selecting Linux, the Debian version 64 bit, and then clicking on next. You wanna have at least four gigs of RAM available for it. If you wanna provide more, that would be great. What you do wanna do is make sure you stay within this green space Anything above four will help your system run smoothly. Once you have that selected, you can click on next. For virtual hard disk, we're gonna be leaving this as create a virtual disk now, and then click on the create button. And then we'll be leaving the default option here of VDI and then clicking on next. Storage on a physical disk, we're gonna be leaving it as dy dynamically allocated. And then for the file size and location, we'll be leaving the folder in the default spot. You Again, you can change this if you want it located in a different location. For the amount of space, I recommend having anything over 25 gigs. I can just put in 30 for now and then click on the create button. So the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is select the Kali Linux virtual machine over here on the left-hand side and then click on the settings button up here at the top. Under general, we're gonna be pretty much leaving everything the way it is. Under system, you can increase the base memory here if you need to. Under processors, we only have one CPU core. It's recommended you have at least two or more. I'm gonna max mine out. I'm gonna keep it within the green space here. If anything above that might be causing problems, so we'll leave it in there. And then we're gonna be selecting the display. For display under video memory, again, we can max this all out into the green space. And then we're gonna be selecting on storage. Inside storage under controller IDE, we're gonna be selecting the little empty CD over here. And then over on the right-hand side, we're gonna select the disk and then choose a disk file. This is where you're gonna be selecting the ISO image file that we had downloaded earlier. I have mine in my downloads folder, but you want to just point to wherever it is on your system. Go ahead and select that and then click on the open button. Under audio, network, and the rest of these interfaces that we have below, you can change and configure however you please. Otherwise, the default settings will be fine. Once you have all that selected, you can go ahead and click on the OK button and we're ready to start up our virtual machine. So the next step is to make sure that it's selected and then click on the start button. Okay, at this window, we have the option to do a graphical install, an install and advanced options and other options. We're gonna be using the graphical install, so we'll have that selected and then hit enter on your keyboard. And now it's asking us to select a language. I'm gonna be using a lot of default settings, but you can select the options that you want based on your region. So I'll be leaving it as English and then clicking on continue. And for the location, I'll leave it as United States and click on continue. And then for the keyboard configuration, I'll be leaving it as American English, click on continue. And then it's gonna go ahead and copy files. Okay, so for configuring the network, the host name is Kali. You can change this to whatever you want or you can leave it as Kali and then click on continue. For domain name, we're gonna be leaving it as blank. And for the username, this is gonna be the username that you're gonna log into the computer with. So you can go ahead and type in whatever you'd like here. Click on continue. And this will be the username for the account. We can leave it as the same thing and then click on continue. And now for the password, I recommend typing in an alphanumeric password with some special characters. And then when you have that entered, you can go ahead and click on continue. For clock settings, you wanna set the region that you're in. Eastern's fine for me, so I'll go ahead and click on continue. And for the partition of disk, we're gonna be using 
the guided entire disk. So we'll leave that as is, click on continue. We'll make sure that it is selected and then click on continue. And once again, we'll make sure that it's all files in one partition. And then once we're complete, you wanna make sure that you have the finished partitioning and write disk changes and then click on continue. Now we're just gonna be confirming our changes. We're gonna select yes and then click on continue. And now the installation will begin. This process might take a few minutes. What I'll do is I'll just jump over to the next step. For software selection, we're gonna be leaving all the options here as default. You can customize them as you want. And then you can go ahead and click on continue. The next option is to install the bootloader. So we have yes selected, we can leave that as is and then click on continue. And now what we wanna do is select our virtual drive and then click on continue. The installation is now wrapping up, it'll just take a minute or two. All right, so the installation is now complete. We can just click on continue to reboot the system and log into Kali Linux. All right, the virtual machine has just loaded up. We can go ahead and type in the username and password. This will be the username and password that we entered in when we created the operating system. And there we go. We've just completed the installation of Kali Linux in VirtualBox on a Windows 11 PC. As you can see, this is not taking up the full screen. Uh, what we want to do is just go up to the view menu at the top and then enter in the full screen mode. Click on switch. It'll occupy your complete screen. All the tools that have come preloaded inside Kali Linux can be found in the menu. So you can go ahead and do that for network exploitation and testing, and you're up and running. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.